All right, right back here at Turner Stadium, Texan Plaza, with uh, Atascacita Summer Creek here tonight. We're going to do our weekly doc talk here. Uh, we've got a great topic tonight. I, I think uh, it's starting to cool off a little bit. People are thinking that uh, the weather may not be, you, you don't get dehydrated as fast, uh, but you do. You, you do maybe even sometimes faster. Let's talk about that a little bit, uh, Robert, about what uh, dehydration and the good weather. Well, yeah, you're exactly right. So many people, you know, relate dehydration to the, you know, the summer heat in Texas and everything and that, and which is very, very true. However, it starts cooling off. The problem we start seeing is kids not drinking enough when it's cool. They think it's cool. Well, I don't have to drink. I don't have to hydrate. And especially in a sport like football, you put all these pads on, um, everything like that. I mean, your body heats up. You're running around, especially your, uh, your, your skilled guys that are running. They don't have a lot of body fat to start with. They're still going to sweat. They're still going to perspire. All this sweat's going to take off body fat, which is going to cause you cramping. And if they don't hydrate properly, then it's going to come back the same I thing as hot. I was watching the game last night, and, uh, and a very good point. I was wa it was on uh, the Cube last night, and it was Elkins, and it was a really good game, great athletes. And the cramping was off the charts that those kids were having last night. Matter of fact, I think it maybe cost Elkins the game that their quarterback was cramping up. And it's a very good point. That's exactly what happened. Well, the other thing you see, too, when it starts getting cooler, you know, we're in, are in Houston. It very rarely gets cold, but it gets, it gets cooler. And what you see a lot of times is, now, I haven't looked out here tonight, but what you may see is these kids they start putting tights on yeah. and everything right. else. And, you know, they get out there, and depending on what type of tights they're wearing, they don't, their body doesn't breathe. Your body still has to breathe. And so the, all this, you know, heat, you're just losing heat, losing heat. That, that's a good idea, and we'll let Gerald touch on this, too, because he played up in Cleveland when it was cold. Talk a little bit about the clothes that these guys are wearing. I know we've come a long, long way with, with the underclothes that these guys wear, but talk a little bit about what's maybe not a good idea right now. Yeah, what's not a good idea? Well, what's, what's not a good idea is, you know, these kids, obviously, you know, you walk outside when it's, you know, it's cold. Let's just call it cold. And what do you want to do? You want to put on a jacket. You want to put on tights. You want to put on something to stay warm. Well, that's all fine and dandy. Well, then they get out here. And they're warm when they first start off, which is not necessarily a good thing because when they start running around and running around, and, you know, by the time the second quarter comes around, you know, even the offensive linemen out there, I mean, that's hard work out there. I mean, then they start sweating and they're sweating, and, you know, it just you are losing all your body fluid. And we start putting all this extra clothes on, I mean, you're just losing more and more heat. <laughs> Doc, I've got <laughs> – I'm going to make it quick, okay? I've got the best story in the world behind that. A guy by the name of Brian Brennan I played with, he's from Boston College, okay? When I got up to Cleveland, he would notice that I would put almost four to five, sometimes six layers of clothes on. Couldn't move, but I was warm when we go out. It was the thing. And, and now that I go back when I'm talking to doctors, like you're saying, what was happening is I was sweating and icing, and it was, I wasn't breathing. So that... <laughs> the cramps came so fast, but this is what happened to me. It cut off my circulation. I remember one time I went off and I couldn't feel my hands. And, you know, it's a punt return. I'm going, I, I said, I can't feel my hands. I said, listen, I've got frostbite. Somebody's got to take me into the, into the, you know, into the locker room. From then, they used to call me frostbite. And they said, listen, you cannot put on that much clothing because your body has to breathe. And that's why you see guys up there. They may have on a... Uh, one of those Under Armour, but it's just a short sleeve, and they, they try not to put on a lot of clothes. I didn't know that back in 1980, I guess, during those years, but, uh, it, it, you know, like we always say, right now we've got so much more knowledge about what to do so that your body, you know, will kind of help out for this person second. Well, you brought up a great point. You know, you look at the NFL, you look at the Cleese, you look at the Pittsburgh, you look, you look at the, right. the, the teams right. up north, stuff like that. And, you know, you look at those offensive linemen, you look at those running backs, Many of them are coming out there just in short sleeves. In shorts. And, I mean, they're just, and by the time, now they're still sweating. All the I time. mean, they're still warm. The you know, time. a good comparison is anybody that has a swimming pool, you know, you lose a lot of water evaporating during the wintertime in your swimming pool. Some people say more so than the summer. In the and it's the same thing carries over to the human body. I mean, right. you lose so much heat. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Now, listen, we've got a special, special guest here today, Doc, okay? I want you to introduce yourself, and then we're going to talk a little bit about you've had such a wonderful week, okay, especially today. Today's a special day, but first I want you to give your name, introduce, and give your, uh, your school. I am Brooke Maniscalco, and I go to Spillane Middle School. All right, Brett. Now listen, uh, I heard you had a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a special treat today. 
Uh, I think, uh, tell me who you might have raised. Uh, there's a certain animal that I know that you kind of raised. And tell me a little bit about his name and tell me what he is. I've raised a lamb and a I named lamb. him Toby. By Toby. Now, you know when you said lamb, I was thinking the lamb may be about maybe 10, 15 pounds. This is a pretty big lamb. Uh, as a matter of fact, he looked like to be about almost 40, 50 pounds. And uh, what happened today? What do we have to do today? How much did he weigh first? How much did he weigh? He weighed 148 pounds. Wait a minute. Pounds. I said 40 or 50. He weighed, how much? Say that again? 148. 148 pounds? He's a very special young man. And what did you have to do today? Today? I sold him from show. You sold him from show. That means, tell me what place you got. I got sixth place in my class. How exciting was that? It was fun. Very, very fun, huh? Well, listen, congratulations. Thanks a lot for coming along, keeping Dad uh, uh, in check. And we look to see what you're going to do next. Now, you know which one you're going to go next? A lamb, what are we going to do next? Um, I'm going to be raising a heifer and rabbits next year. Heifer and rabbits, okay. Come back and give us a little bit about that next year, okay? okay. Give us a little update. All right. Thank you. All right, now that's a special guest that's right now. Hey, we got to jump. We'll see you next week right back here at Turner Stadium. Itasca Seed at Summer Creek tonight. You can turn it on and you'll see it at the end of the ball game, one hour after the end of the game. And we'll see you next week.